Warning, the following podcast contains violent scenes that may be unsettling to some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, and welcome to Changing the Lost Vanity. Vanity is a first edition Chronicles of Darkness game set in southern Florida during the year 1993. Father Katrina, played by Tillman, Raymond, played by Chris, Isabel, played by Andrew, Frank, played by Slavic, and Adam as the storyteller, as they uncover the mysteries of the true fae and forge new paths for themselves in a world of beauty and madness. Follow us on Twitter at twin underscore cities underscore VTM for channel updates, and we hope you enjoy this episode. Where's Manny? So he got he got pretty much dragged into Isabel's car and thrown into the back while Isabel just kind of like just rushed him away from the property. Just no particular direction, just just peeled out. Okay. Well, to be fair, Frank trusts Isabel, so it's not as bad. Still. Yeah. So you, I mean, you probably have this feeling that okay, good, like, he's he's with a court mate and stuff like that, but you still feel uneasy, especially hearing him call for you like that. And you yeah. guys have this type of bond where, you know, he he felt pain thinking you were in danger, and he, he cried out to you, and you, you felt, you know, some, you felt an emotional response, you know, hearing that as well, so. Yeah, definitely, and, you know, uh, Frank sees it as his sort of job of you know it's just what he does he protects manny so when someone else does it he feels almost like i don't know like uh like he should be the one doing that yeah okay that makes a lot of sense so uh so i guess frank's outside then and is anyone else there katrina's also outside basically everybody's just kind of kind of shuffled out of the room as quick as possible. Raymond and Charlie are still inside of the property right now. Um, all of this is kind of happening in a matter of seconds, I just want to add. This is, this is like all the past minute. So, Katrina, are we going to trick up on those two? I don't want to leave them alone there. It's dangerous. Yeah, we should do that. Just go. He sort of storms into the house. So I, I locked the door, just so you know. I closed the door and locked it. Oh. So uh, Frank will just knock very, you know, just, well, knock, you know, just really bash into the door. Just, Raymond! Raymond! Raymond, you're inside. You're you're looking at Charlie and his, his like, fugue state, and you're hearing this these intense banging on the door, and you hear Frank on the other side. What What's going on? I say real loud, Frank, give me a couple minutes. And I'm going to, I'm looking at Charlie right now when I say that, like what state is he in? Is he still like eyes rolled back or is he like coherent or what? His eyes are rolled back. He seems to be just completely frozen in place. Um, You could, you can move him. Like if you picked up his arm, it would just drop, but he's not seizing. He's not, he still has warmth to him. He still has a pulse. If you were going to like try to check for his vitals or whatever, but you don't know what's going on with him. You're trying to snap him out of whatever the fuck is going on. And it's it's taking a while or it's not working. But when I smack him, nothing happens or anything like that? No, not yet. I want to explain what's going on in Raymond's head right now, okay? okay. And I want to explain this to make sense of what <clears throat> Raymond may do. So remember when we did the whole going into Charlie's dreams and Charlie said that he felt that he was being taken over. And you remember Raymond went outside and told Isabel and everyone like, Hey, I think Charlie's like compromised. I think he could be a threat. I don't know if you remember that. And so right now in Raymond's head, that's been confirmed. So, um, he's going to grab a pillow, like a throw pillow that's on his couch, you know, or in a chair. And while like Charlie's in this, fugue state not responding he's gonna put the pillow to charlie's head and he's gonna pull out his pistol and he's gonna like kind of have it like on his forehead you know what i mean so he doesn't have to see his eyes and he's gonna pull out his pistol and he's gonna like put it up against the pillow there he's gonna like cock the hammer back and there's gonna be like a brief second where he's like looking down like hoping like there's some kind of like something being said um some sign by like by, by like him that he's that 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 like he's coherent and i take it there's nothing 
So he's going to pull the trigger and just shoot into the pillow and shoot into Charlie's head. Okay, you, my friend, need to give me a clarity check. (laughs) Killing another changeling or killing a fetch. Roll three dice, and that's clarity five. So if I understand this, if if you pass this, you don't lose any clarity, right? Is that how it goes? But if you fail it, do you drop down to clarity five or do you lose a point of clarity? That's what I'm trying to figure out. You drop a point. One success. So, you know what? In your head, you did what had to be done. And it sucks, but you don't... Well, here's the thing, too, is impulse. You know what I mean? Like, I'm thinking, like... And I didn't want to do... Like, I was really, 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 really fucking juggling during the break. And even, like, up until, like, you're handling that scene or whether... Because I don't, you know... Like, he has history doing something just like this when he thought... Some just like this happened, if not worse, and that's what got him in good graces with Manny. You know what I mean? And then he like sees this and puts two and two together with on top of all this like crazy shit that's going on, you know, intense shit that's going on in the moment, and he just kind of handled it the only way he knows how to. Frank and Katrina, you guys both hear this muffled it sounds like a like a muffled firework just goes off in inside of the house. And then you hear like this kind of quiet afterwards. Okay, so Frank is going to use his changeling, what's it called, uh, contracts? Anyway, stone to ogre's rending the grasp on the door, which subtracts one durability per success, basically makes the door weaker. And the catch is that I'm trying to remove a barrier, which a locked door is. It's just going to try to crash it. This full strength was weird. So that removes two durability from the door, and Frank ch- just tries to smash it. Okay. I'm just going to say you're, you're able to just break right through it. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you give it a, a, a hard lean with your shoulder, and it just kind of pops right off the hinges there and, and slams flat down on the ground. So you open the door. You see, you see Raymond, and he's, he's kneeling down at the edge of the couch where Charlie was kind of leaning and you see this, this white pillow over Charlie's head and, and you see the, the feathers still kind of just floating in the air a little bit. And then you see the, just this, this red splatter that's just kind of like kind of going towards the, the seat of the couch where Charlie's head was. And it kind of, you know, it's, it's running like ink sort of in a splatter pattern, just like directly behind him. He's obviously totally still. And Raymond is kind of, he's kind of just sitting there still holding the gun. When I hear the, like the door, I take out, I hear the door crash open and everything yeah, like yeah. that. I'm just going to like slowly, like put the gun to like my temple for a second. Like I'm contemplating it. You know what I mean? Like not even looking at the door, you know what I mean? But just like, like for a second, like he's, you know what I mean? Like you can't handle what the process, what just happened there. You know, like he's starting to like st- starting to hit him the whole situation just how like in that minute like everything just fucking went from zero to 60 you know what i mean and hearing the door bang open like that just kind of makes him realize like what happened like all this just happened you know and his first instinct i think is just like fuck it you know what i mean like that's his first instinct for a second you know frank what are you gonna say anything when you when you see him starting to raise this this pistol to his head well, Frank will just he tackle him probably. So Raymond, you're just he he tackles you before you're before you're able to to decide to do anything, whether or not you were you were going to it. He he just tackles you down, and you just feel almost this uh, suffocating weight on top of you as he just kind of is restraining you with his entire body. What's going on in your head right now, Raymond? This must be bringing back some memories of the of the first time you you like killed somebody, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the same impulse and the same like you know going from your ultimate high adrenaline, hyper vigilant rush to like you act upon that and the immediate come down from it. You know what I mean? And to be frank, right now in Raymond's head, like in his head, honestly, right now all this is unrepairable now. Like, like he, you're fucked. You know what I mean? So, like, 
do, do, do you get what I mean? Like, there's no fixing this. Like, Raymond can't fix this. Like, nothing can fix this. Like, their leader just fucking is gone. He doesn't know, but you know what I mean? Everything's just, yeah. no one can control this. No matter any facade, any kind of, like, fucking society, any kind of role, any kind of fucking pretend, like, ha, 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 we're living happy lives. Like, none of it. None of it's real. It all sucks. There's these things that are on the other side just waiting to take us, and it's just inevitable. Either they're going to take us, either they're going to use us, or either we're going to fucking die. And those are like the only three guarantees right now in this life. And there's no happiness. There's no nothing. And none of it's ever going to get fucking better. And and there's just a moment like like when he's t- tackled by Frank, like he doesn't feel suicidal anymore at the moment. But he knows that like especially, especially, especially with the naive thoughts that like so many, even him at a time, Raymond had, you know what I mean, for the last 20 years, like none of it's going to fucking change. It's helpless, you know what I mean? And he's just thinking that as he has the lumbering form of Frank holding him down, you know? Trina, if you if you were to walk into the doorway, what you would see is you'd see Frank on top of Raymond, and you'd also just see Charlie's Charlie sitting there still. It would it might take a second to realize, but you would see that this pillow is is kind of um still rested over his head, his neck kind of kind of turned at an angle and just this um just this giant blood stain um across the across the back wall on the the couch and the seats of the couch what's your reaction to this uh katrina is shocked like she's frozen in place maybe uh maybe almost losing her stability and she just can't process it uh like she uh, knew raymond was um pretty paranoid she also found out um, he shot his wife. Uh, he once killed a... Um, yeah, he killed one of the loyalists. And um, generally, she had the impression that he may be a bit paranoid, but has genuinely a good heart nowadays. Now it's just like all crashing down on her. Like, oh shit, I trusted this guy so much. I spent the whole night here. <laughs> Damn. I want to leave you guys for a second. Frank, you're you're just holding holding back Raymond. Raymond, you're just kind of giving in under the like the pressure of of Frank's mass. You're not, you're not really fighting him anymore. You're just you're just letting him restrain you. And um I want to cut to Isabel. You are ripping up the street with with Manny in the back seat and he's he's just he's trying to to get his bearings trying to to get himself sat back up and stuff like that you kind of threw him onto the back seat and you kind of rolled off as you as you sped away so he's trying to get his bearings and sit himself back up and he's reaching around from the back seat to to grab your shoulders and he's just like isabel we have to go back isabel please bring me back isabel cállate, bring cállate, me back. Cállate. He's sobbing and, and just pounding on the back of your seat to just turn the car around. Just please turn the car around. Oh, she is not listening at all. Are you just still kind of just just getting as far away as possible? Yeah, she's in that, that zoned out mode of like, this is what I need to do. Yeah, like, anywhere but here. <laughs> Any, yeah, exactly. Like, s- shit's going down. Whatever it may be, he is suffering and she is doing her part. She feels beholden that she needs to protect him. And he he just needs to be away from here. And so she is getting him as far away as she can. And so he's whatever begging and pleading and like, go back. No, no, no. She's fighting against it. And she is uh, she is channeling that like inner fire that she has, you know, just like, no, shut the fuck up. We are leaving. And he's he's just sobbing, just like Frank, Frank. <laughs> he's just completely emotional at this point. Is he loud? Kind of. He's kind of. He's. It's. It's actually a little bit more subdued. He's kind of just like just sobbing for Frank, and it's like very weird because you never saw him in this vulnerable position before, where he just showed okay. any kind of weakness. You know, you've heard people say, and and you know, you're a summer court person, so you you don't let people talk talk shit about Manny, but. You've heard people say that Manny is the the least human among any of us, and you know you know why he's he's gotten reputations like that. You know he's he does whatever the fuck he wants. 
always. And he doesn't, he, he just, he makes his own rules. He, he doesn't, he doesn't give a fuck about what anybody says. And, you know, he's willing to do whatever he wants to do. So that's something that Isabel has in common with him. Right. So when she sees or hears this reaction from him, it pisses her off. She is mad. She's mad at him that he's not taking charge of the situation. She's mad that the situation is even happening. And there's just this moment where she's just angry. She's gripping the steering wheel. She's driving and she just slams on the brakes. Right. Comes to a complete stop. She gets out. Car's still running. You know, it's in park. She gets out. She opens the, pat- the the side door, and she just, like, grabs him. And she just holds him and screams in his face, Shut the fuck up! You know, just loudly in his face. Pinche puta! You're supposed to be the one in charge! What's wrong with you? And just shoves him back. And he just stops, and he's just silent. And he just he just wipes, he just wipes a, a, a tear from each eye. And he's just like he he pushes you back a little bit in a way, and just not like a not like a mean like physical way, just kind of like like a like a football player thing. Like you pushed him to psych him up, and he's pushing you back to say like yes, like okay, like you know, it's like if it was gonna get any more intense, you guys would like butt helmets together or something. But yeah. he's just like okay, like all right, all right, and like he he's just like what what the fuck do we do now? What are we gonna do now? Isabel, give me a uh, what was it? what was I doing? It was a um, wits and composure. Wow, it was wits and composure. Wits and composure. <laughs> when in doubt, wits and composure. Two successes. Two successes. The color is back in Manny's face, and he's it's like he's just snapped out of something, and you're not reading this 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 faintness on him anymore. It's kind of just like he's he's like okay again. Whatever was happening to him just passed somehow, and he's like he's ready. F- He's ready to do whatever is going to happen next. She lets go, you know, because she's like gripping his shirt, holding him. She was screaming in his face, you know, she lets go. She pulls back and she says as calmly as she can, considering the circumstances, because, again, she's like incensed. You know, she's pissed. She's angry. And the whole situation is just making her just like, you know, there's just any sort of uncertainty is making her upset. So as calmly as I can. What now, boss? Isabel, we have to go back for the others. Listen, we need to go back for them. What happened in there? Frank was yelling. He could he could be hurt. Isabel, he's he's one of our court mates. We have to go back right now. Please, Isabel. She lets out a, like a deep sigh. <sighs> Fine. Okay, but move over. You, I'm gonna drive. If you have trouble again, we're leaving. Isabel, we don't have time for this right now. Just scoot over, okay? Uh, we gotta get back there. No. And she sits back in the driver's seat. She, like, slams the door, gets back. I drive. You see, he's, like, he's very frustrated at this. He's, and he's, he's, you see him trying to figure out if there's, like, another way. But realizing that the only way that this is going to happen is if he lets you drive and is, is compliant and goes along with you. This is the only way this is going to happen. You see him, you see him take, like, a deep, gulp and he just like swallows his pride and he just like gets in the in the passenger seat and just waits for you to i mean he was in the back seat back. So oh back seat yeah but this time he's, gonna, he's gonna move up to the passenger seat this time so he gets to ride with the adults raymond katrina and frank you guys are still just frozen in this this revelation of kind of just like walking in and, and seeing charlie like that frank you seeing raymond like that Everything just kind of reached its its peak in the past, you know, minute, and things are calmer right now. Frank, you're just kind of holding Raymond. Raymond, you're not really fighting against him at this point. And the suffocating energy of the room is kind of gone. And you guys hear birds outside, and you, you just hear the, the sounds of just life outside, and things are just quiet. You hear the the TV at a very low volume, just still still playing the uh, Spanish soap operas that were on before the room exploded in chaos. Raymond, what it, what are you what are you thinking right now? This is this is your house, and you know it's 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 peacefulness to you has just been totally totally defiled. What's going on in your head about about this whole situation right now, or like what 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 you can make of it at this point? 
Uh, in Raymond's head right now, the process of rationalizing it is already starting. You know what I mean? Like it went from impulse to fucking realizing he followed impulse to now rationalizing it and making it okay what he did in his head. But I think part of right now he's feeling like there's really this strong urge to get out of the house and he like wants to go into the he wants to just go by the ocean or like 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 into the ocean you know what i mean like just to like he has a sudden urge like he just wants to walk there and just like strip down his underwear and just go in the ocean and just kind of like uh forget and just like cleanse himself in a way you know what i mean of like of like just what happened in that room and all that feelings and all that shit and especially like how you said hearing the signs of life that are out there you know and hearing the birds and 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 the door being open and just like kind of smelling and all that he just wants to get frank off him so he's gonna just say like not demanding or angry or anything he's like just like get off me get off me frank please get off me promise not to do anything stupid i won't frank just get off me please yeah so friend or Frank gets off him, sort of. So there's a moment where, like, I get up and I'm gonna look at Katrina, and I, I assume she's still in shock, seeing that. You know what I mean? And and just be like, walk past her, you know, just like not even like say anything, like while she's staring at the body. He's not even looking at the body. It's like, it's like something he doesn't even want to look at. He knows it's there, but he doesn't even want to look at. It. So as he like walks out to his porch and like down the steps towards the ocean and i'm just gonna like take off my shirt you know what i mean as i get to like where like the tide comes in i'm just gonna like take off my shorts and just like start walking in the ocean you know and just like to where like his you know he's submerged up to his neck or whatever and just kind of like just processing that he just took a life you know yeah frank will follow him probably like you know he won't like take off his clothes and jump into the ocean but he'll probably like take off his shoes or something and dip his feet in the water, just sort of wait for an explanation. As you kind of stand in this neck high water, you feel this total sense of calmness kind of wash over you. It's like being in the womb. You, you sort of like feel the, the waves just kind of put you into this, this meditation that kind of happens, you know, pretty quickly. Like, you know, as soon as you get out there and, and it gets, gets to that height, that deepness, and you kind of, just stand there with your arms out. It's like it immediately just soothes you in a in a way that nothing else can. And you kind of mull over what just happened, this insaneness that happened in the past minute or two. And feeling this kind of peace in the air, feeling the, the peace that kind of came over the house after you did that, you do feel guilty. You do feel you don't feel happy about what happened, but in a way, part of you feels like you you did the right thing, I want to say. Part of you feels like you helped Charlie in a way that nobody else, in a way that nobody else is really going to understand. Part of you feels that maybe if Charlie was still here, even he would have, even he would have asked you to do the same thing for him. And you think about the, the pledge that you made with him and it, it, it makes you sad that Charlie's not going to be here anymore. That really hurts you because you, you did take to the, to the young man and, and he was very special to you. And part of you did worry that, you know, something bad might happen to him either way. And you worried about what it was going to feel like to eventually face that someday. It's very true. Yeah, exactly what you said. And almost in a way, he does feel extreme guilt. And in a way, I would say he, he would even like once he's like obviously been relaxing and buoyant, like you said, and just like alone with his thoughts, I would even picture like he sees Frank standing like on the shore there. You know what I mean? And like when he's looking at Frank as like an anchor in a way there, you know what I mean? Like a lighthouse as he's as he's sitting out there, he starts rationalizing in his head because to be fucking honest, like Raymond right now feels guilty with what he did, but it just makes his resolve for his hatred of changeling or of, of the true Fae right now is, is, is stronger, you know, because they did this to Charlie. You know what I mean? Not only did they take him and kidnapped him and do this horrible thing to him, then they made him an unwant, an unwilling slave of theirs. You know what I mean? And in his head, he's already thinking that maybe all the shit that Charlie thinks he did do did happen. But and Raymond said also right now is a total fucking like, you know, I told you the first buds, the first seeds of being like his, his annoyance at the leadership in the city. Now that shit's starting to flourish because in his mind, he thinks if Charlie 
didn't get addicted to drugs and Charlie wasn't like, you know what I mean? The shit wasn't being peddled to Charlie and Charlie wasn't just like, you know, like how Katrina and Raymond were talking about helping these, um, the crow people, you know what I mean? And cleaning them up. If, if that would have been done, then this might not have happened either. So he's like, instead of taking the blame, which he should for taking a life, you know what I mean? He's now starting to like rationalize it by blaming it on the, um, true fate and not even on the leadership in a way but he does still feel guilt for doing it like he's not saying like but to him again like i said i could imagine it being this this evolution his thoughts start forming that way and like now he's the one who had to do the hard decision because no one else can you know and they couldn't fix charlie there's no way in his head he thinks they could fix charlie they couldn't even figure out what these sticks were let alone how the fuck a true fay you know what i mean would take over a person let alone getting people to even believe that you know or even act upon it and this is all in his fucked up rat in his mind he's trying to rationalize this all i don't feel that way as a player obviously it's fucking horrible what raymond fucking did you know what i mean and there could have been help but in his head he acted impulsively and now he's trying to explain it well it's not my fault this happened it's not my fault this happened you know so would you say like in the back of your head is there any inkling that um like maybe it didn't have to go that way or or do you like know like that's that's the only way it could have gone and like yeah. it's not but I, I would say there's an inkling, just like there's an inkling he killed his fucking wife. There's, like, there's an inkling like he took that dude's life with an ashtray, just like an inkling that he's suicidal because he fucking yeah. is. You know what I mean? But now he's trying to like explain it away in his head, you know, trying to compartmentalize it. But yeah, I would say definitely there's a part. If confronted with the hard facts and he said his bullshit and someone called him out on his bullshit, he would know they were right. You know what I mean? But right now he's in the ocean looking at this ogre, trying to collect his life, trying to get back on track. And then he's starting to rationalize this all. Frank, what's going on in your head right now as you stare out at this this weird thing that like like Raymond just kind of just like took off and jumped in the ocean and you're kind of just like watching him. You just tackled a gun away from him to try to keep him from killing himself. What what do you what's what could possibly, you know, how are you making sense of this right now? Well, you know, Manny told me to trust Raymond. So, I, I'm just going to wait for a rational explanation for this. And, you know, Frank understands that this might not have been easy for Raymond. And, you know, maybe he found out that, you know, he was a loyalist or something. Or maybe he did the right thing, maybe he did the wrong thing. But, you know, it's not for Frank to judge. It's, you know, either for Manny or, I guess, in this case, for Norma. Or I, I'm not sure if like changing courts have like a what kind of justice system they have set up. <laughs> so yeah, that's a pretty good point. I didn't even consider you know what the implications would be outside of your your small group. I never even considered what the implications would be just on like a purely human level. Like to to an outsider's perspective, that is just straight up human on human murder. You know, so it's kind of like. You, it's really. I find that really interesting that Frank is, he's he's put off by it, but at the same time he's he's not the judge. I think that's like a really cool character trait about Frank is that he, like his obedience to the freehold and his obedience to the word of Manny is kind of just like amazing. How at this point he's still just able to say like, okay, well maybe maybe it's not like exactly what it looks like or something. Like maybe he 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 acted the way that he was supposed to act in this situation. So Katrina, are, have you, have you been able to, to process any of what's happened at this moment? I imagine that, you know, you're still pretty much frozen in place after, after what's happened. Do you go in? Do you, do you look at Charlie or do you, do you just, yeah, you know, I think I uh, look at Charlie. This, this sucks. Okay. As you lean <laughs> in to, to check him out, the pillow kind of falls away from, from where it was rested against his head and you see it and it it's horrible it's just a just a hole where his face was and it's just you know going all the way through the back just into the couch and it hits you right then it's just like oh wow like this we can't go back from this this is so it's it's just so permanent you know and it it hits you because you were just sitting on that same couch with him moments ago and he, you know, watching TV with him and he smiled at you and you saw the, the chance for a life again in his eyes, you know, 
you saw the the person that was in there that was still dealing with a lot of problems that was still very unsure about what his position in all of this business you guys have together is but was optimistic to come out on the other end of this and do right by his people too even you know he told you the last time you guys talked about the winter court like i just want my friends to be better too he's never going to be able to to do that now and you you know that's kind of starting to like sink in for you a little bit as you as you just like look at him yeah i think um katrina is going to run away like run away is, where um good question <laughs> i think she doesn't <laughs> really <running>. know <laughs> Um, no, uh, she was basically left at the house with Frank, who I think doesn't have a car, but he can, it looks like, take care of himself. Raymond, who she uh, doesn't know how to handle right now. And it's all way, uh, it's all way over her head. And she's just, has been left there by uh, <laughs> Isabel. So she's just going to grab all her things, put on her shoes and run out the front door and she actually uh, keeps running like she doesn't go for a bus stop or anything i mean it's a sunday anyway so that would be difficult but she just walks for a while and tries to uh, be active and not think too much is there any Sorry. possibility that on uh isabel's return that she would see her flee oh dude i love that oh my god yeah, I do too. okay yeah yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, but before I get into that, um, Katrina, what is like, what is your emotion right now? Are you, are you still like, like, are you still processing this or are you feeling sorrow or like, what is happening as you run? Like, what's, what, what are these emotions right now? She's, um, probably like, uh, panicking really hard still. Like, that's what she, uh, that what's that's what drives her to keep moving like she has to do something right now she just doesn't know what um and things are going back and forth in her head like the the picture of charlie uh, just uh sitting there on the couch and um thinking back to all those things that raymond has said to her in the last two days and it all uh, it just it goes back and forth like this big collage of madness and she um well she's kind of lost with it and she's definitely um i don't know sad is not the right word but it's definitely uh, affecting her a lot okay so as you as you continue up the street and you are starting to feel this kind of adrenaline fade from you a little bit as you are becoming physically exhausted from just this full out sprint up the street you've been doing uh, a car passes you and then you kind of you take a second look at it as you see it starting to slow down and, and pull over to the side and what you see is if I, if I know it's her it's not just a slow down kind of stop it's a slam on the brakes okay <laughs> all right yeah, yeah. <laughs> you you basically this car just kind of like just comes to like a peeling stop just like right in front of you and you look and you see it's Isabel's car and she's driving and uh, Manny is in the passenger seat. They both just kind of like take a second to read you. Isabel, do you, what do you say? I won't say anything. I'll just kind of like swing the door open, get out and stand in front of her and just kind of looking at her. Do, is she hurt? Is she in trouble? Like, do I see anything obviously like physically wrong with her? She's not like she's not thinking along the lines of what should I say? She's thinking of the long she's still in that mode of like Did something happen to you? You know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So she's immediately like standing up and looking at her, like, Are you okay? What's wrong? What's is, you know, she's running away, what's happening, you know? Katrina, how do you respond to, to them stopping to, for you? Do you just keep going or do you do you like what what happens? No, I stop and I'm looking at Isabel, like with a silent cry for help, like all across the, my face. So, 
Is that a thing I can read without having to like roll anything? Can I tell like she? I would like, say yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You just you can just read something's wrong. You just she like, will kind of rush forward and just embrace you, and just kind of hold you for a moment. You know, uh, letting you sob it out if you need to. Just whatever crying or <laughs> screaming or yelling, whatever you have to do. She just comes forward and just holds you. I don't want to act it out. I'd feel uncomfortable, but... That's um, fine. <laughs> Katrina will be uh, a bit incoherent, uh, like crying, sobbing, but she definitely gets out, like, Raymond shot the kid, and that's pretty much it, and after that she's just wailing in terror and panic. So, Isabel is trying her best to calm her down. Um, she's not paying a whole lot of attention to what uh, what might be happening in the car behind her if he decides he's going to, like, hop over in the driver's seat and peel out or something. But, like, she is just trying to help her friend at this point. She sees the distress on her face and the emotion, and so she's just holding her. And there might be a few tears on her own behalf and is just trying to calm her down. Manny gets out of the car and he just kind of does like a quick pace back and forth just like two times. And then he just like puts his puts his hand on his head and he's just like, oh, fuck, 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 fuck. And he just looks over to you two that are both embraced and he, he goes over and he just kind of squeezes the both of you. And this is another thing that's strange to you, Isabel, because... He's, it's like, he's, he's, um, never, like I said before, he's never emotionally vulnerable, but to, to just see you guys like that, he just has to, he just has to go over and, and try to hug both you guys and just be like, okay, okay, come on, come on. Okay. Okay. You guys. And you can see him. He's trying to, he's trying to like rationalize, like he's trying to like calm you guys down a little bit, even though you can tell in his voice, he just knows it's futile. He's just like. Okay, 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 don't worry, okay, 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 don't worry, don't worry. Okay. He's just trying, so, to, trying to calm things down. Um, Isabel is, I think, holding it together a little bit better than um, she was, so she's not uh, totally, like, breaking down yet. That might happen later, but at this point, she's still kind of, like, in that, that survival mode. So him coming over and just like, it's okay. It's a, we're going to be okay. She's just kind of immediately snapping back to it and just like, okay, what do we do next? Manny, Manny just, um, just takes Katrina and just kind of like holds her by the shoulders and like puts himself like right in front of her face and just kind of like lifts her chin up a little bit. And it's just like, Hey, Katrina stick with me now. Okay. Okay. Just, are they still back at the house? I don't know. Are, is anybody else hurt? Is, is Frank okay? I think Frank is okay. <sighs> but he let him go. Christ. It's okay. Listen, we don't... And he just, he cuts himself off and he's just kind of like... You see, he's he, he relaxes a little bit once you say that, that you think Frank is okay. It's like, it's like a parent that lost their kid in the store or something like that. And they just like finally find them. When you see, when you say, I think Frank is okay, something just like changes on his face where he's just like you know like a, a relief a visible relief you can just see but you can still see this he's still very very disturbed by by what you just said isabel says to uh, katrina she says let's go back let's get frank let's make sure everybody's gonna be okay come on can you are you okay are you gonna be okay can you can you get in the car are you gonna be you're gonna be all right uh, she just nods a lot. She's just happy to be with someone who's still sane. <laughs> someone who's still sane. Okay. So, unless nothing else, we are going to head back. Yeah. Okay, before you guys get back to the place, I just want to do a, a scene with Raymond and Frank. So, Ray, you're still just, just floating silently. Frank, um, standing on the beach behind you watching very stoically yeah i'm gonna start making my way back after i've like rationalized and everything um 
then I'm just gonna like start like going back towards the shore, you know, and start like walk up and I know that I'm gonna have to tell Frank what what's up, you know what I mean? Like Frank's like this like I said when when Raymond was rationalizing what he did, he was looking at Frank like a light, like a light uh what do you call it? Um a lighthouse. And like he was basically using that to focus, like, okay, what's going on, rationalizing. So now he knows when he comes, he's gonna have to like answer, you know, for what he did. You know, so he's already like knows that he's gonna be talking to Frank when he walks up there. So he kind of still like in his underwear or whatever, you know, like jockey underwear or whatever, he's just gonna like walk up to Frank and kind of just stand before him, you know, because he doesn't want to get his clothes wet that he took off and just gonna look up at him. Yeah, Frank is, you know, sort of picking the mirror shards from his hands and throwing them into the sand, you know. So you saw something in the mirror, you said? Yeah, I told you what I saw. Frank, do you remember the other night when Charlie was sleeping and Isabel went into her dreams and then I had a talk with Charlie? You remember that? Yeah, I remember that. Do you remember when I went outside and I said I was scared that one of those things might be controlling Charlie? Yeah. Frank, that ended up being true. We'll see. The thing is, Frank, it's not possible to see right now. Well, I'm going to have to take you to Manny and Norma. I understand. I'm going to talk to Manny. But before we do, Frank... You have to understand something. Those things that took us from our families, from the ones we loved, from the world, we can't understand them up here. They don't follow the same rules as we follow around here. Not like motion to the ocean and motion to the beach. Mm. So when we try to understand how they do things, we can't. It's like a fish out in that ocean trying to understand how you do things, Frank. It's just not possible. (laughs) Frank sort of, you know, he was sitting this whole time, I think, you know, he's dipping his toes in the water. He'll just stand up, yeah. stretch, you know, say, well, Raymond, I can hardly, I can hardly understand what you people do and why you people do the things you do here in this world. You know, my day, things were different. And they're different. They may be different. They think different, but so do I. You have to go with me now. Yeah, I will. And do you know something else, Frank? Hmm? Huh? This isn't the first time I've done this. And Manny knows that. Why do you think Manny and I are such good friends, Frank? Because Manny knows that I am the one that can do things like this sometimes when they need to be done. While others like Isabel and Katrina and the Acro people and Norma they continue to pretend like they're still normal, like before they were taken. But me, I'm the one who has to make the hard decisions. And that is why Manny and I are good friends, Frank. Do you understand? So when people come to tell you what happened in there was wrong, and what I did was wrong, you have to understand that just like you say that some people don't understand you and you don't understand them, These people don't understand the decisions we, people like Manny and I, have to make. I mean, you understand why Manny has to do the things he does, right? Sort of doesn't say anything. Manny has to because he's a leader to protect us. And what I did in there, I had to do to protect you and people that we love. There was no saving Charlie. They used him. Those evil things that did this to us used him and ruined him. And were going to come after us through him. And I feel if Charlie was here right now with us, he would understand why I did it. Because Charlie would not want to hurt any of us. I did not do that to someone, Frank, to be mean or to be evil. And not part of me hurts for what I had to do. But others don't understand that. And remember that because you're going to hear them. They're going to say what I did is wrong. But remember that our leader, the person you are friends with, knows that this is what I had to do just like I had to do it before. Let's go. So, yeah. I, I guess we go to your car. You guys start to, to walk off of the beach together. You see Isabel's car kind of arrive back at the house. 
this time not pulling all the way into the driveway, just coming to a stop at the street. And the doors fly open. Manny runs out. He comes out of the car and he just like is immediately just just making his way towards the both of you. Hello, folks. Have you ever wished you could have an easy way to find gameplay videos and podcasts or just media in general that deals with your favorite white wolf role playing games? Or have you ever wished you could find a forum to share gameplay that you have recorded, one which wouldn't be drowned out by random posts and discussion? so that your media could get the attention you want. Well, we have the answer for you in a Facebook group we run called Weight Wolf RPGs Gameplay and Media. The group is specifically ran with the sole intent of it being a one-stop shop for people to view or share media involving the games we all love. We take thorough steps to ensure the page does not become cluttered and is easy to traverse. We are currently over 1,000 members strong, and we are continuing to rapidly grow with new media being shared every day. Stop on by. We hope to see you there. Hi, Level Games, the industry's first choice in taking your games to the next level. We are a podcast blog and new media network at highlevelgames.ca. We have blog posts about all of your favorite games going up five days a week and a podcasting network with actual plays and shows that discuss role-playing games with more rolling out all the time. We are on iTunes, Twitch, and YouTube. Find out more information at highlevelgames.ca, a site that certainly isn't controlled by a shadowy board of directors of otherworldly origin. That's highlevelgames.ca. Please, help. They're coming. The Los Angeles metropolitan area is constantly growing and changing. The central district is full of new buildings. The Hollywood and Wilshire districts, once far from downtown, now are part of a which spreads past Beverly Hills and out to the ocean. But why is all this going on in Los Angeles? Why is Los Angeles an exploding city? Neon Masquerade The Demon's Mirror Thirteen Candles Three Chronicles Running Through the Undead Veins of the City of Angels The Esoteric Order of Role Players Actual Play Podcast invites you to drink deeply. Go to eorpodcast.com and search the Duets tag to find out more. <laughs>